Welcome back to the thrilling, uh, I'm going to call this the conclusion to our Dwarf Fortress beginner introduction series. Not really even beginner introduction, but just struggling through Dwarf Fortress. Uh, the last time we did some water experimentation, and I found this personally the most exciting part of the game. I love the systems in Dwarf Fortress, and I have just observed them for so long. And now to actually be able to uh, grapple with controlling some of these elemental uh, cellular automata systems is amazing, and I've loved it. There's a few other experiments I want to do in this video, and then I think I'm just going to kind of let this one go. I'm going to go ahead and say it would be a shame if all of my dwarves survived this video, because I'm going to attempt to do some astronomically dumb experiments, and somehow we've got up to 143 pop. We're really not taking very good care of these dwarves, or certainly I haven't been taking care of them. I don't know who has. Somehow they've survived. But um, ideally today we'll get through, I would say, about six or seven things. We're going to be doing military and defense a little bit, or just trying to make sure that we've got everything right. We kind of looked at it a bit, but I don't really think we knew what was going on. We'll try to do that in a more robust way. Then we're going to combine water and magma in a pool just to see what happens. I think that would be fun and exciting in the lower levels. I Chat keeps telling me Minecraft happens, but I, they, I don't want them to spoil it for me, so I'm just going to do it myself. More experimentation, hopefully flooding or just making some mistake to cause fluid to leak out. I think that would be good. I'm hoping to drain the river into the cavern or something like that. Maybe it'll happen or just... I mean, they call this a magma sea, and I can't really see down to the bottom of it either, so... I just kind of want to keep digging and sending people to their doom. I think that would be a good time. We might look at library and book and scroll making. That sounds good. There's a lot of other systems we aren't going to get to, but, you know, we've we've touched on enough of them that I think we've got a basic idea of what to, what is going on in the game. Um, flooding the caverns. Flooding the entire fort for no reason would be a great way to end it if um, my dwarves do manage to survive. Um, flooding the bottom cabin, and also just like, I don't know, irresponsibly throwing the lives of my dwarves down into the depths of the earth. I think it would be, a, like I said, a major failure if any of them survived. So, without any further ado, I guess let's get started. I'm going to turn back, sorry, I had notifications off for a little while on uh, Twitch chat. I'm going to be kind of, this is, video is going to be the bad one. The, the other ones before this were better, but I'm expecting to, this to be a very bad video. So, let's kind of start off with our military. So I've been looking into a few tutorials on this, on um, on YouTube. Uh, namely, there's a couple of, well, we were chatting with Blind the other day. Blind has been coming out with some tutorials. And there was another uh, guy named Twisted Logic Gaming who had some really good tutorials on this. Just very thorough and helpful. But um, I'm finding that the UI is now quite helpful. So I thankfully, I don't need to go to the tutorials for every single thing. Although they are quite good and you should check them out. Um, but that is to say... You don't get to the point where you have to memorize stuff. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. That's a lot of talking about it. But, so we have... Excuse me. We have an archery range here. And we have ordered a squad to... Squads will use this barracks. We have the inky crabs. Isn't this... Green means go, right? Oh, no. I apologize. The axe, although they are not an axe-wielding squad. Are these people the archers? Let me just go ahead and make sure. Go back to our military. This is kind of where the whole military section takes place. I know it's like a very unassuming part of the menu, but it's just this one blue banner. And then there's also a very unfortunately placed X in this UI that you want to be very careful with because it can cause you to accidentally disband the entire squad. So that has been getting me kind of worried. So this is renaming the squad. Let them A A A L L L L L L. I mean, it's gonna happen. Grave Lord Aaron, thank you very much for the sub. Officers of the Corridors. Again, we're going to be ignoring most of the events at the massive expense of our dwarves. Um, sorry. That, that's one thing we're going to have to cross that bridge when we start playing this game. Let's say, well. But we have, uh, this is their symbol. Let's make it, uh, yellow, which is, of course, the color of archery. Um, because yellow means cowardice and we're running away from people. So what does this even mean? So we can check boxes, and then that brings up the order menu. And then this is where you can directly order them to either go to combat, stationing them. Station, I'm trying to see. Okay, so stationing, I guess, is useful for if you're trying to get them to guard a wall or something like that, right? Or station a room or station some point. We don't really need that. We haven't needed that. Would be useful if we were trying to get them to defend an area. Um... um 
assigning a patrol order. We don't really need them to patrol either. There's no level we want them to do that on. Uh, burrow defense order. We haven't really done burrows. Burrow attack any hostile creatures. Uh, that we haven't really gotten to that. Uh, the training order, we were just going to keep them on the schedule. So we don't really need to do the training order. But canceling an order, just we won't have to do that. Kind of f funny the way that this UI is a little bit, but it, it does make sense. It still feels slightly funny, but it, it, maybe I'm just memorizing it, getting used to it. Anyway, we've got the positions assigned. We have Doran, who is responsible for something that I can't really remember. We've got more archers. Let's say that every dwarf in our fort is going to do something. We've got a novelist, novelist, not a novelist, a novice wrestler. Uh, man, can you imagine just a bunch of wrestling dwarves that come out of their, of their home? I think pretty much everyone has no relevant skills as well, right? But it seems to be okay to just have all of your dwarves engaged in this. I was wondering to myself, okay, there we go. So they're equipping themselves with bows. Will they limit themselves to the number of bows to the... No, it doesn't appear that they do. They just gradually grab them all. I was wondering, do I need, like, the number of chests to get to that? Mark's dwarves have a tendency to bull rush opponents the second they run out of bolts. That is quite exciting. So maybe a wrestler is actually not that bad for our fort. However, let's go back to the squads. So the inky crabs. Let's call this something that sounds more ranged, shall we say. Uh... What is this front compound, rear compound, first adjective, second adjective, hyphen compound, VX? Oh, this is like so that you can generate a more interesting name. Wheel the Inky Crabs, Fungus the... This is like a band name. Totally random. The Gloved Dobbs, the Decisions of Crafting, the Crystalline Rewards, the Strong Mint Bodices, <laughs> the Diamond Lances. Let's call them... The constructive... I, I want something that's more ranged. Can I just customize it? Where is the customize button? Uh, oh, the... The constructive... Wait, I, I do want to see how this works, though, a little bit more. The constructive ages. Oh, this is so interesting. This is like the dwarven language at the top. And then this is the uh, English language at the bottom. Am I am I totally wrong about that? Wrestling is very effective at high levels. Think martial. Yes, I'm thinking that this would be very exciting. Like people kicking each other in the face. Thank you, Harkins. So that is interesting. So this is like Casa Doom. The Constructive Ace Act. I do like Ace because that seems to suggest... The Shootsters. The Shootsters. That sounds... Uh clear the construct shooty arrow arrow okay good enough for me the constructive arrow act there's clearly more to be done here and i'm not like fully understanding this but that is quite exciting because you do get that in like rimworld where you get the auto generated randomized name um people becoming a manager whoops Have we caught, caught all the Drowthas, too? We w should have caught most of the Drowthas by now. Oh my god, all of the Drowthas. <laughs> what happened with that? <laughs> yeah, I remember that from the last time. I'm just not even going to pay any attention to these Drowthas. There's so much stuff going on. Um, anyway, so. Creating a new squad. The Constructive Arrow Act. I at least know that they're wielding arrows. Let's go ahead and assign more people to the... Um, to the, whatchamacallit, squad. Now, I know I had a lot of these people on medical duty, but I'm just going to neglect all of the health of my dwarves. <laughs> this, oh, whoops. Uh, no, I am not doing this right. I should not have done that. That was a mistake. Where is the... Mm. Mm. No, bad. Bad AA. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I'm going to use the very inconveniently placed disband button because I just want that to be gone. Hatches of passion are no more. Because I accidentally started p putting people from this squad into it. Oh no, they just automatically reassigned themselves. Again, grappling through with some of the um, systems that may seem slightly confusing here. Okay, we'll just put the wrestlers in there. They do gradually equip themselves, though. Most of this seems to be automated. That is quite good. Okay, so let's go ahead. Well, let's just go back into their schedule instead of trying to deal with the other people first. So, to get them scheduled... Back to squad. Constructive arrow act. Color. This. 
Schedule. Schedule is here. Equipment. Assign uniform. Um, add uniform. Update equipment. Details. Leather legwear, leather shield buckler. Mm, they seem to be equipping themselves with enough stuff, so I may just leave that as is. I, I'm surprised that I can't click into this, though, and see what weapon they're using. Leather armor, confirm. Individual choice range. Oh, so then that's at the bottom. So let's look at someone who has a bow in their hands. You have a bow, or rather a crossbow in your hands. Peach wood crossbow. That's no assigned items, so then this has been assigned. The rest, I suppose, are personal. Truly hard to say. I don't really know what I'm talking about there, though. Okay, let's just go into schedule, because I know what that is. So, I like staggered training. That seems good, right? Because we have some dwarves who have other jobs, like, you're the doctor, so you shouldn't be doing this all the time. If not changed since the previous version, melee attacks with crossbows were governed by hammer dwarf skill. We will get further, and I'm really just on the basics right here. Um, <laughs> Bofa. We have Bofa in our squad. A few monthly schedule. I know what comes next. I know what comes next. Now, constant training. Let's go ahead and just do this because let's find out. I mean, we're going to do things that will destroy our fort now today. I told you we would. So let's just see what that looks like. Because I think constant training with arrows is exciting. And did they have this? They should go into our archery range then, and then just start shooting these targets all the time. And let's see, if they don't, well then what prevents them from doing it? Doran Le... Where are you? Where are you, Irvad? Irvad and Gizados was basically our favorite dwarf from the very beginning. Irvad, where are you? Where are you, Irvad? Irvad and Gizados? My god, there's so many goddamn dwarves. Is there a control F for my dwarves? I still don't actually have this. Do I? I mean, I have zoom to. <laughs> oh, I suppose I could alphabetize them, and then U kind of comes near the end. So that's helpful. Irvad and Gizados. So there we go. So we have a sort tool, but we don't have a control F type of tool. So he's just drinking. He's drinking in... Uh, hang on a second. Follow him with the camera. Store item in bin. Let's see if he goes... So he's picking up his equipment. Soldier, no activity. So let's see what happens here. Is he going to go up to the training room? Maybe he'll go into the barracks, or maybe he'll go into the... So yeah, he's hanging out. Nope, he is hanging out in the archery range. Okay. So now the other ones are coming along. Okay. So it just took them a little while, like a few minutes, to get this ready. But basically, this is what I predicted would happen. They came in to start training. I've told them to train forever, which is probably not a very good decision, but, you know, they're doing it. And so what happens now is basically what we predicted from before. When we set up our archery range, um, left side of the uniform menu is what they're supposed to be. Ah, thank you. And to they obtain the appropriate piece of armor. Okay, so for right now, I'm just I want to make sure that they're doing the things they do. Let's uh, I'm gonna give it just another minute for Keep that. In terms of like schedule, hey, thank you very much for the very kind words, Greasy uh, uh, Muff Muff Cabbage. What what the heck? Well, thank you. Um, so basically, this is a, a DAS tactic design that I'm using. Let's go ahead and smooth out some of this too, just so that it's yet even more pleasant for them. Although that seems unbelievably pleasant already. So that they can see the faces of our dwarves in the de in the lower area. Though I did see that somebody made a, a mod to make this, like, give this more opacity. And also somebody made a mod to put the hotkeys of these things on the Steam Workshop. Now, I'm usually not a fan of putting mods into the game right away, but those are probably ones I'm going to download. That you could sort of see through already right here. I'm not sure if they... I have to go check out this amazing mod, though. But people have been up to amazing work on this game, though, too. So, very cool. Anyway, um... Oh, look, even the humans are doing it. The poets are smoothing the walls and the floors. My god, we do have a lot of dwarves. This is such a fast task. Once you have many of them. Can't there be forts with, like, thousands of dwarves? Truly amazing. Hey, one true cube. Thank you very much for coming out and for the kind words. Anyway, so they're doing smoothing now, and then hopefully they'll get back to training, because I have told them to train constantly. I'm wondering what types of things cause our dwarves to not train, though. Stray All of the dogs are dying. Okay, we're just going to continue ignoring everything. 
Everyone just do whatever you want. There we go. Okay, let's go back with our friend Irvad. So Irvad and Gizados, what are you doing? You truly are a weirdo. You are, you are a true weirdo. Irvad and Gizados. So he is the militia captain, soldier, no activity. He's still on soldier, no activity, though. Um, why aren't you training, Irvad? I mean, the thing that I was also wondering about is, will he slowly starve to death? Because this is sometimes, like, you know, in RimWorld, for example, if you tell them to work all the time, they will just work themselves to exhaustion and they truly don't have common sense. So I'm trying to kind of test the waters of how much common sense is written into Dwarf Fortress's code, that is to say. Because I know that I will do some astronomically dumb things in a game in which you can get this deeply under the hood. However, that being said, I want to be ready for them and know where to expect them. They'll keep food and drink on themselves and stop training when they're... Yeah, so they seem to, like, take care of themselves, although I do tell them to train a lot. So that is good to see. Um, the priority work situation. Yes, that is quite good. Oh, so there isn't even any type of priority work si system like there is in RimWorld. I tend to default to RimWorld because it's so much like Dwarf Fortress in my expectations. So, again, I will probably stop saying that as much as we go on, but... I think that a lot of people are probably doing that. So... Um... Yeah. Just saying, oh my god, that's huge! What is that? Like a muskrat or something? Giant badger sound. I'm really liking the crispy pixel art that we get for these giant... Remember when those goats came around and everyone was just like, what the hell is... There were these huge goats that came over the other day. Let's follow the giant badger sow. Isn't that how you pronounce it? Sow? It's a sow, right? Ah, there it goes. What is a sow? You never hear that word. I saw a possum the other night when I was out walking around in the in the world trying to become a Pokemon master. I was looking for it. I tried to capture it in one of my in one of my balls, but um, no, unfortunately, I was. In, <laughs> of course, I'm kidding, but. <laughs> But yes, my quest continues to become a Pokemon master. Anyway, um, carrying on then. Here we, <laughs> here we are with our fort. So we've done a little bit of the military training. It looks like the rest of the squad is kind of coming in and out. I want to make sure that nobody is, like, missing out on it. Let's go over back to our squad. So who are you? Your Dumat Dakas. This is uh, your, like, your rapper name. There we are. Dumat, you've been training. What about Cole? Cole Bim. Let's see what Bim is doing. Has Bim trained you? I just want to make sure that everybody in the squad is training to be sure that this is really working. I'm trying to kind of check in on them, you know? Bim. Oh, hopefully we don't have multiple Bims. We have... Oh, Jesus, we do have multiple Bims. Bim Regak, ma'am. Yes, this is, was the first of the Bims. Soldier, no activity. So you're running down a hallway with a bunch of dogs... Going to okay, you're going to the tavern. That's pretty legit. Like you're having a good time. Sorry, I haven't been. I'm going to this part of the game only because in RimWorld, I think what separates like a, a truly beginner player from like what I would call an intermediate player is the ability to kind of assess their pawn's needs. Most people kind of rage quit RimWorld that I have observed because they can't figure out why everyone is going crazy all the time. And so I'm I'm trying to get past that phase myself with this. So he's worshiping, he's conducting a meeting. Maybe he has like some important gathering that he has to go to. There's a meeting for some reason just with another guy. He sits on the table in the office. They talk about rainbows and then he goes home. Uh, he's conducting another meeting apparently. Or maybe that was just normal socializing. No, he's having another meeting with exactly the same man. He's feeling satisfied discussing his problems being yelled at by an unhappy so the guy, this guy's just sitting in his office and he's unhappy and he's yelling at everyone who comes in but now we're getting to what was truly appearing to be the horribly antisocial dynamics that are happening in my awful fort <laughs> I, I don't know if any of this is true but it's what appears to be happening empathy while being cried on by an unhappy citizen Okay, so, like, there's some seriously scuffed things going on today. I'm feeling randy today. What the hell? Would I play a critical role-style D&D game? Oh, they did do that, right? I know Nook used to do the D&D &D streams. 
Man, I haven't done D&D in a while. I actually, in fact, I've never done it. I, no, I was, um, I misspoke. I was at a club a while back where they played D&D. I played Magic for a while. I haven't played much Magic recently, though. Give dwarves a cabinet in their rooms for a place to store their clothing. So, yeah, we could probably take better care of our dwarves, but I don't... I mean, I could make 140 bedrooms today, but I, I think it would just be more interesting if everyone were just miserable. <laughs> um, yes, but you are absolutely right. His thoughts tab, it will give... Ah, thank you. Okay, so that's helpful. So we've got what he's actually doing here. Recent thoughts, memories. Satisfied remembering work. Remembering talk. Became less, ang less anguish, uh, anxious and learned to value peace. This is so... <laughs> This is so much symbolically being, like, transmitted here. There's a sock on the ground in that office. <laughs> now I feel as though I'm starting to appreciate just the depth of what's going on. Eager remembering being elected. Self-satisfying remembering mastering mining. I, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of curious as to what the different color text means. I think it's universal. That good things are in light green. And then where are the bad things? So the bad things are warmer colors. Outraged is like a, a very saturated red. But now we've got kind of a mellow yellow for something that's kind of, eh, that's not so good. Something, sympathy seems to be, it's hard to tell whether the, this shade of green, like the mint color, or this kind of more, um, like green color of green. I don't know how to describe that, whether that's better, but there does seem to be a spectrum going on here. Okay. This is good. Beauty, beautiful, yes, Krug is a god. Krug Smash is a god. Unmet need. Oh, there we go, unmet need. So where is the unmet need? Um, center right literally says, uh, where is that? Where is that? Where does it literally say unmet need? Oh, overview tab, thank you. Mm, okay, unmet needs, so pretty much needs decent study. So this is like where we go for example, if our dwarves need something, so for example, if they have a trait, like something that they value, like they're very jealous or they're very greedy and they want a very nice bedroom or something like that. So is, this seems to be the tab where we go for that. Only thing is that these aren't really labeled. So I'm supposing that these are traits. This is health conditions. Though this is also combined with roles. So maybe this is roles. Then these are his skills, dabbling. These are qualitative words. We've been over this a little bit. Un oh, here we go. Sorry, I missed that. Unmet need. Excitement, acquire object. I totally missed that. Yeah, there we go. Be extravagant, be with family. The only thing is we can't really mouse over these. Like, what is what does it mean to be extravagant? I suppose drinking a lot of fine wine in a, in a very nice room or something like that. Dabbling biter. Yeah, that is a bit questionable. So, uh, send this creature to a linked site or expel. I, I, I want to be aware that this is there. Eat good meal. A lot of this appears to be things that we can fix with kind of blanket things for all of our dwarves. I don't really see too much micromanaging going on here because it just seems like that is... No official position squad. This person doesn't have any unmet needs. But you have things. You want to acquire an object. You want to be extravagant. Craft object. More. It seems good to like get an overview. A lot of them want to craft. A lot of them want to spend time with their family. Be ex Many of them have this be extravagant thing. So it would be good to know what that is. Unmet need excitement. Needs decent sight. Yes, so some of that is, is the title. Yes, yeah, so now I have been made aware of this. Why do they just take off all their clothes in their study? This is interesting, truly interesting. Jewelry, they'll pick through stockpiles. So some of this is stuff I'm going to have to put on a checklist for later. Kind of like the Rimworld equivalent of, like, didn't eat at a table. We'll destroy the entire colony tomorrow out of dis grave dissatisfaction. Very well then. She's tattered, then they strip it off, preferably in their own, own rooms. We could probably do a stockpile for that. Some of this stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and say, just so that I'm aware that it's there. But I might not go into it. Um, because I want to make sure we get onto the fun stuff. And now that I know it's there, I mean, for example, what I would do is, like, let's go ahead and take this. I'd probably carve out more stockpile rooms. 
Um, What's the easiest way to jump between elevations? Mm, Just it doesn't scrolling seem to, or... Um, it doesn't seem to be able to let me to shrink the stockpile. Maybe that's going to be a thing, too. Uh, free food, uh, thank you very much for the sub. As far as scrolling between elevations, I'm going to go ahead and say set hotkeys, F1, F2, F3, F4, and settings, like we did in one of the earlier videos. Just in order to be able to get from place to place. Whoops, that wasn't the right menu. You, you click on this top right uh, arrow to the X thing, and then this gives you the options so that you can set it to a current location. You can kind of set hotkeys. Yeah, I like scrolling. I inverted mine because I found it a little unnatural. But um, also shift scroll lets you scroll between many levels at once. So I thought that was nice and useful. Anyway, that's about the only thing I'm qualified to talk on here. But a little bit of military and defense. So they're on schedule. They don't really, they seem to have a lot of needs so that they're not really doing it. I'm wondering a little bit as to what I can do there uh, to just get them in and training more. Now I did see in a tutorial video that they seem to need more weapon racks. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just make another squad. Well, let's just be really thorough with this one first. Let's go ahead and check out their gear. Burrow defense. I'm not gonna worry too much about burrows right now. What if I order them? I order you to train, right? Well, they're already being ordered to train. So they're already just gonna do that. Okay, let's equip them. So make sure I've got this. Leather armor. Okay, so we can tell them to do it out of a certain leather headwear. So this is their body armor, their headwear. Their... So let's say, um. We obviously don't have anything. So, oh, and we can make it a different color, too. I did see this, yes, so that you can have different colored dwarves for different squads, so that you could differentiate them that way. We may end up doing that eventually, because that would be quite attractive. Leather footwear, individual choice ranged. That's fine with me. Um, seems to just be like that. New bodywear, new headwear, new legwear, new handwear, new footwear, new shield. What happens if we click on that? Bucklers. Oh, so you select the... This is kind of a... Hmm... Honestly, I've, if I'm reading this right, I find that slightly unnatural. I would, if I were to have built, wait a second. Enter name here. Constructive arrow act. Num. Shootsters. Oh, that's the uniform name. I'm a little lost. Anyway, I would think that this would be up here. Like, I would have transposed this entire section. Does that make sense? I need to have them dyed for them to have different colors. Well, yeah, we won't get up to that, but... Hey, white tit poison. Thank you very much for the prime. Just get, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uniform window is one of the only ones that have confirm and save menu. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm starting to see that there's a lot of presets here. So... I think for right now, they're pretty good at the default. I'm going to leave that as is. But let's see if we want to do... M um, melee. Now, I haven't seen Captain of the Guard being very useful. Is that like your royal squad? Because I've seen Militia Commander's squad, where this seems to be more important. Okay, so that's like police. So Captain of the Guard is like somebody who will walk around and make accusations of people like, You there! You know, get your fingers, stop scratching your butt, you know? Like, you, you butt scratcher, you know? Smelling up our colony or something like that. Um, so, you know, well, obviously dwarves can do more sinister things, too, than just, you know, smelling up the colony, but let's go ahead and militia commander's squad, let's do, we will say we don't really want them to be archers, but we'll make them leather armor, I suppose, because it's probably cheaper. I believe we did have, what's her name? Who is the leader of this? Kogan's, uh, Zun to something or other. But we'll be careful now not to assign the already assigned yellow dwarves. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and say is I probably would be better off not assigning essential dwarves like our surgeon or anyone with forbidden labors just because we want them to be freed up all the time. And I noticed that dwarves would just train instead of curing the sick people. And I'm like, mm, bruh, like, you know, heal him. Stop training, stop training. Here we go. We have rel uh, skilled wrestlers. I could put those on, but they aren't really showing up at the top. Are these sorted? It seemed as though they were sorting them at the beginning, but I'm not sure. Yeah, competent spear dwarf. Okay, so they don't appear to be sorted. There seems to be... Are they in order of their professions? There, to me, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to the sorting. Um, which I suppose that when there's so many, like, how would you sort it? But... I would think it would be alphabetically. Maybe I'm missing something here. Occasionally, there is some ingenious sorting thing that I'm missing, but it's not always 
highly intuitive. Some menus don't. It's just, thank you for that. Harkins also, thank you for guiding us through this entire thing. I do appreciate it. So I'm just going to put people in these squads who are relatively decent with melee. Um, let's go ahead, because we just want to see what happens with the, the archer squad. Like, they're gradually meeting their needs, and then they come back, and then they're shooty, shooty, shooty. And then they shoot. And this is all going into the pit, like the das tactic type of pit, which I really like that pit. That's very nice. Um, and then let's go ahead and click on them. So we could do this multiple, so we want to be very careful with that. Let's go ahead and schedule the mountainous guilds. Let's just have them train all the time, too. You know, we could stagger it. Normally, I guess I would st stagger it because I, don't, I want them to have time off. I want them to focus on labor most of the time. But now I think we do need to assign them a zone. So, which squads will use this barracks? The Constructive Arrow Act is our <laughs> amazingly named... Oh, someone had a baby. Uh, is our amazingly named Arrow Squad. So, this is our barracks. And this barracks is for... Oh, this is interesting. We've got more things. This was individually... I'm just going to ignore that for a second. The mountainous guilds. We want them to do basically everything, except for sleep. Yeah, store their individually assigned weapons and armor here. Squad will store squad-level equipment here, such as ammunition. And I know I'm going to need to build more stuff, because I simply didn't build enough. But let's make sure that they're filling up these ones first. So, here comes the uh, something or other guilds. This is the squad that's in here. They're in there. They're training. They're training. So what are you doing? Waiting for dodging demonstration. So what is this? Why is this person just in their underwear? Watching dodging demonstration. Watch dodging demonstration. Wait a second. I really want to pause. Who is demonstrating the dodging? Who is dodging? Individual. Okay, so this very buff lady is seems to lead. Okay. Or Kogan Zutershamib. Are you the leader of the squad? Hang on a moment. Yep, you are the leader of the squad. So the leader of the squad demonstrates how to dodge, then. Is Tor Solo demonstrating? Uh, we shoot. I would like to do Kenshi on the VOD channel sooner or later. Because I've just been wanting to play it again. We've been in this fort for uh, six years or so. I mean, nothing has happened just because I've made the world very peaceful. Um, let me see. Okay, so you are dodging. You are leading. Everyone else is watching the dodging. Good. It's a little... So, like, are some... Who else is the other dwarf? Watch fighting demonstration. So there's a fighting demonstration on going on here, too? Watch... Lead. So Thob. Thob Astaltosid. That is such a name. Wow. Thob Astaltosid. Are you, like, the best at... He's a skilled fighter. So what about the other dwarfs? Are they, um... Let's go kind of check them out. So are, what are their traits? Novice armor, novice discipline, novice observer. You have an observation skill, dabbling fighter. So it seems as though legendary observer. Wow. <laughs> that guy was such an amazing observer. <laughs> he observed the heck out of me. Legendary axe dwarf. I mean, that makes sense. But <laughs> I suppose that's kind of like skilled learner or something like that. Very skilled observer. So you're a skilled fighter, but what about, um... I'm wondering, I was thinking Kogan was just going to demonstrate everything, because Kogan is the leader. You're a legendary fighter, Kogan. Why don't you... You're just a skilled fighter, though. So I'm getting curious. I was thinking, do they, like, pick the leader? Do they pick the person with the highest skill who just does it? Um, I don't honestly... I can't honestly tell why they pick who does what, but whatever. I'm just willing to go through with it for a moment. What was that sound? That sounded bad. That could be the end of us. More fighting. Um. He just into. He could be an unpaid intern. Fair, fair. You know, I might have put this stairway in a risky place. Looking back at it, it's still someone could potentially get shot there. Mostly, I think that they're okay though. All right. So basically, as long as they're just in here, kind of standing around, that means that they're doing striking they're doing individual com um okay so you're actually training yourself now but the other ones are observing watch dodging demonstration do the skill systems work just by do it and then you get better at it i mean we aren't allocating trade points it seems to be that right they trade off usually higher school skilled dwarves are more likely to teach so it won't necessarily perhaps always be the one with the best then as i read that 
In addition to those skills, they have combat abilities which are affected by individual traits like strength, dexterity, kinesthetic sense. Jesus, that's a lot. Okay, so that's nothing. Like, what I'm finding is that in RimWorld, there's a lot of absolutes. Like, oh, this person will... And I can kind of see into the code, but Dwarf Fortress has kind of... Like, there's a little bit more gray. And that actually might strangely be more accessible or perhaps less prone to things going horribly awry and then not understanding what's going on because i was very surprised that this fort didn't horribly get destroyed because i still have no idea what i'm doing in many ways um hey cold toes welcome in thanks for coming out slowly get more muscular and in shape as they train i wonder if that appears on their sprite yeah because it's very exciting that they're getting buff you know gains with the z Teaching, observing, student skills that affect how quickly they pick up, teach. Jeez. Okay, so that is quite good. So, well, we've got them pretty much on a constant grind. Um, so what happens if we go back to squads? Let's just say, okay, like they've been training. They've been on their grind. But um, let's go ahead and give them a kill order. Can we keep this kill order shown? And let's just see what other things there are. So let's say, um, let's go find something that looks dangerous that we shouldn't fight. Where's the giant rat? There's a giant rat in our wine storage. Gross. So let's go ahead and um, let's kill that. Ew. What is that? Okay, so will they come off of their training? Let's go find out. Okay, yes, clearly they have. They have slain the giant rat. It's it hardly even didn't stand a chance. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can get into its combat log or something like that. There's a giant rat mangled corpse. It is splattered with troglodyte blood. It is splattered with giant rat blood. It is splattered with giant blood. <laughs> it just keeps saying that. <laughs> this is like all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that is great. <laughs> oh my god. Toggle visibility so we can get it to disappear. <laughs> what, is, what is it splattered with? It's splattered with... You know what it's splattered with. There's also crocodile blood on it. Did you see that? Okay, so I mean, it's quite good. I guess. It doesn't seem like as much of a loss to lose all your dwarves though you know um let's just kill all of our stuff uh <laughs> i don't know we've got all these drought this year so we could could we issue like a massive combat or let's go find somewhere that there's a lot of drought because there were many on this one floor and just i i can't have that many of them whoops would be nice if i could kind of scroll in this menu i wonder if there's a way to do that okay so there's a lot of drought here guys Probably too many. So let's go ahead and just see if we can drag. Get that one. Is there another Drowtha? There's another Drowtha over there. So we issue multiple orders. This is useful. Just kill them all. Kill them all. I don't know whose they are. Some of them probably belong to us. Just kill them. Take their lives. I, I told you I wanted things to not go well. So let's just see. What happens when this... This would essentially be like... I'm assuming ordering a, the killing of a bunch of giant thrombos. Maybe the dogs, too. We just simply can't have this many dogs around. Sorry, avert your eyes. Confirm. Okay, let's see if this destroys the fort. Yeah, execute order 66, basically. Okay, so this should just be a giant bloodbath. Okay, so we do have an alert. Okay, Dusim has been found dead. Okay, so one of our dwarves died fighting a Drowtha. Let's just go see. This is very sad, obviously. One of the worst things that's happened in our fort so far. Where even is his body? Oh, here we go. The death. Yes, Dusim, uh, the milker, has been found dead. So we are there. Whoops. Where is Dusim? Tirist. Vukar, Doran, Fikhod. Is there like a quick zoom to corpse? Oh, combat logs. Uh, that would be under logs, right? Information menu, task information menu, workers. I'm just trying to like get a sense of what's going on in the moment. Because most of the stuff that we've been doing has been 
um, you know, like orders generally around the fort. So I'm just trying to get everybody into some serious trouble. Tasks? No, whoops. No, that's not it. Um, swords on the left side beneath alerts. Thank you. Oh, so we have to do this. It's not actually a menu that you can get to see a log of everything. Okay, we're fighting a turkey. Where is there a turkey fighting? Wait a minute, we just caused a massive... Oh my god. Well, anyway, let's just let the bloodbath play out. Kill them all. Kill them all. They'll probably go crazy on all of our other dwarves. Is everyone else dying? No, they're chasing the other Drauthas. For the most part, they won. Just somebody got kicked in the face, I guess, by a Drautha. And unfortunately passed into the, into the netherworld. Again, you know... I just kind of got bogged down in an analysis a moment ago. Is that vomit? Oh, Jesus. Okay, so they will clean this up on their own. Look, here they go after another one. Clearly, they're trying to kill that one. That's a huge Drautha. Man, practically everyone was fighting. So it wasn't just our military squad that seems to have got caught up in this. Practically, once the combat began, everyone got involved. Whoever was on that floor, because there were a bunch of people just hanging out in the pile of gravestones. Good for them, but, you know, that is it. Animals will fight each other autonomously if they're in cramped... Okay, so, like, there was more going on. Kind of like, a la Rimworld, animals hunting other animals. Okay, very good. Very good. So we got a combat order. We got our squad to do that. Do we perhaps need to cancel this order? Let's just go ahead and say, cancel an order. Cancel. Execute order. 66 is over. Did anyone die? No one died. Thob is still around. He can demonstrate perhaps jumping sooner or later. Okay, so one thing I'm trying to figure out is... Uh, like, they've got all these armor stands and stuff. What is this? So this is a weapon rack, and this is an armor stand. And they don't truly have a lot of weapons, to be completely honest with you. Many of them are just kind of walking around with their hands. So I don't think we've even made all of the weapons that we need for them. Let's go ahead and just take a look at this squad. So we do have enough bows, or what's, uh, crossbows. Uh, and we have, we seem to have enough bolts. So I'm not too worried about that. But let's go ahead into our, oh, well, wait a second. Ammunition. Apple, yeah, we still have hundreds of bolts. 1,200, oh wait, 1,204. Jeez, that's only of that material. Of quite a lot of these. Other thing I'm starting to see is quality. Uh, I think we've got quality here with the pluses. I believe that star is better than plus, but I'm not sure about the other ones. I just have to go through them, I think. This does appear to be uh, brought over from Legacy, though. I think I'm right about that. I'm not entirely sure, though, but I have to go double check. Does anyone have that? Stands and weapon racks are decorative now. Item to. Oh, really? Thank you very much. Nobles may demand this. I have a fully functional barracks without any rack stands. Ah, uh, thank you very much. So we don't actually need them. Okay, so minus, then equals sign, then plus sign, then three... Then three bars, then asterisk? So three bars is better than plus? Oh my gosh. I was thinking that it was... That is so confusing. Why don't they do... One bar, two bars, three bars, plus asterisk. I feel like that would make more sense. Is that the order? It Are you sure about that? Does pl is plus worse than... Wow. I'm trying to think of how that makes sense. That might make sense mathematically. Thank you, Tsunami Aromatic. God bless you. I would never have guessed that. Okay, so it's one minus sign is the worst. What if there's just nothing? Hang on a second, let's go back and see that. I am confusion now. That is good to know, though. Okay, so, if it's just regular, nothing is base quality. So which one is worse than base quality? We've got minus sign, followed by where is equals sign. We should... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, we've got minus sign. Yeah, here we go. X item X. If you go into stockpile settings, you can filter by quality. Ah, uh, ah, that is quite good. Ah, this is a very good way to see this because that is, they could have just picked something that was be more gradiential, you know what I mean? But 
Well, whatever, I won't question it. Workshops and this thing, let's go into custom. Okay, total quality, core quality, standard, well-crafted. Total quality, superior quality. Oh, so we can see if we want to by doing that. So we do have several qualities. Standard, well-crafted. Oh, so we don't appear to even have anything of negative quality. It's just like, it's okay, it's good, it's great, it's amazing, it's incredible, it's the best thing you've ever seen. It's, uh, is artifact the best? Or is masterwork that, and then there's just something. Oh, okay, so negative quality would be like tattered or worn. Okay, I see, I understand now. Type, uh, but it doesn't really show that. I'm wondering if we're in a menu with something like ammo. I guess that can't be, but let's go ahead and see clothing. Clothing, um, cloth metal, no, that's not it. Um, okay, I still don't feel like I've fully mastered it, but I know that it's there, and that was like one of the goals of this thing. So thank you for trying to uh, help me with that. Anyway, military and defense, we have that. We've done it. We haven't been invaded yet. We could start doing guard orders, but I'm content seeing that our squads are training. They're here. I could give them more weapons, but that would be more like... Well, let's just do a couple of those. Let's do just some basic weapons. So we go here and we just say, let's say sword. Do they have like, um, could they make one out of metal? Wooden training sword. That's totally f Rock short sword. <laughs> Let's just do it, because it's a rock sword. I Though, also, too, we should probably not have them using real pieces of rock. <laughs> Why do I think that's so funny? Okay, uh, sword. Oh, my God. Tra we do have a... Uh, well, let me just see. Training. Training. Uh, now that the, we know the keyword training. Uh, uh, the fact that we have nickel cage... <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing. If they don't use training, yes, I had, I think I now I learned that. Someone had mentioned to do like wooden and training equipment, and I was thinking, hmm. Are there other types of training sword? Training. Oh, okay, so they, they do need to be of wood then, I suppose. Training sword, training axe. So we'll say make some of those. Training axe, uh, training... This might be a good thing to just start off with. And I presume that they could use these in combat. I mean, obviously, you would want them to have, like, real weapons. Training axe. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and make this just a conditional. Training axe is less than 10. So, let's just say, yeah, that's good. Okay. And we'll make all of these conditionals less than 10. Question chat. Will they equip themselves? And, yes, let's just always have rock short swords. That must be a great idea. Um, who even knows, really? Well, there are granite clubs in RimWorld, and those work quite well. Plasteel spears, stuff like that, and they are good. They'll not hurt themselves sparring with sharp weapons. Training weapons are really only useful if you want to make sure you don't hurt your... Vi okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so... Um, would there be any incentive to have them hurt each other? Like, would that make them tougher? As a la Kenshi, where if you get beat up, you get stronger, or you get tougher? Is that good in this game, or is it just always bad? Oh, it does make them tougher, technically? Wow. I I imagine that there's probably better ways to, cha to train your... Yeah, but it's marginal. Okay, so that makes sense. If you want to train your doctors, too... Hey, I'm just saying, that was one of the coolest things when I first discovered it in Kenshi. Like, hey, beating up is actually a good thing because it makes me slightly more of a tough person. Um, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. So we've got our military practicing a bit. Let's go ahead and just, we'll give them a few more minutes to make those wooden straining swords and spears and things like that. Doesn't really look like they've equipped too many of these yet, but let's um, let's look at them. Doran, what have you got? Hang on a second. Doran, who, who, who is this? Mm, I would like to just be able to, well, I guess I can do it this way. Items. Copper battle axe. Does it go? It doesn't zoom right to that item if I click on another dwarf. What about you? You have a copper spear. So these are all made of copper. We'll see what they do with these. We have decided to just train our entire squad as wrestlers because we tried to get them to make wooden swords and we had a wooden sword order, but our manager just keeps praying in the temple uh, and he refuses to do his work. And although, like... We could interrupt Kumil Cattle Dan Man, who is 
clearly one of the best dwarves who's ever lived in our fort. Where is Kumil Cattle Danman? I just want to kind of go about the daily routine of Kumil Cattle Danman. Oh, no, he actually has gone to his office, or rather his bedroom. Well, here he is. Uh, I mean, at least he's happy. He's okay. Is he even happy? He's all right. He's all right. But he keeps going in and out and in and out. Soldier, no activity. Okay, so he's doing that. Or we might have accidentally put him onto that fighting order, in which case he pretty much never does his job. But yeah, no, we did that. And then where is our squad again? Because we have ordered them that once they eventually do make these wooden swords, they eventually will do that. But we've been doing wooden training equipment because we obviously don't want them all to, you know, hurt and kill each other. Although we could sort of train them in, in toughness by having them fight each other. But then there is the whisk, the, the whisk that someone could die. Uh, so we, we did add a uniform... Uh, we, Wait a minute, where's the other one? We did create a training sword uniform too, since the first one didn't go very well. And now they've all been assigned the wooden swords. So eventually they will make those. But yeah, there's probably just a bunch of grotesque inefficiencies in our fort. I'm totally fine with that because I don't really want to get into all of the inefficiencies. I'm just kind of in the business of exposing myself to as many systems in the game in this video. And I don't want to get wrapped up too much in all of the fine details on this so I really know what I'm talking about. So know that that's there and know that our entire fort is now horribly inefficient in terms of stockpiling the number of dwarves that it's taken care of. But we're just going to keep on trucking. So the next thing that we wanted to do, we did look at military and defense, and that was kind of the most important thing here. So the next thing I guess that we could do is I'm just going to, because this can kind of happen on its own in the background, and I think it's cool, and I'm kind of curious as to what will happen. I want to mine into the magma. Why? Because I love life, and I find it interesting. Um, let's go ahead and bring this over here. So they are at the same level-ish, but we also don't want to get our dwarves killed like right away so let's do this i'm just going to have one small strip it's over here S don't stop me don't tell me why this is a bad idea i'm doing it whether you like it or not um whoops we went a little bit too far we do want an orthogonal because i want a good swift rush of lava um and then <laughs> we'll go in over here let's mine and we'll just prepare this so that we can have it ready. And then let's just test something else. Because, you know, I of course, I am a firm believer in science. And I believe that we should keep on testing things out as we go through the game. We are paused right now. So we're going to go ahead and assign them to start mining this out. And this is just going to be amazing. Um, now, what I'm kind of curious about personally is what is a safe floodgate for magma? Hopefully, there's something that can work another science lesson so when the lava or when the magma is still in the volcano it's considered magma and whenever it's out it's considered lava when it's flowing out so we're looking at i think this is magma here because it's still i mean we're still in the volcano but there's not really a volcano we're just kind of underneath the earth so i presume that that's magma as well Whatever it is, that's uh, that's what science says. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I don't think that we have a high enough priority. Now, someone on, on uh, YouTube had commented that I should use priority two for these things instead of priority one, which I was using. Which honestly might not be that bad an idea, just because what if something really urgent came up? Um, however, in this series, I'm just sort of in the business of do it now. So, like, that's fine. So, yeah, are they doing it? They're not doing it. So I'm just going to say, like, do it now or else. And then we should get Mr. Blinky Arrow. And then hopefully we will. Otherwise, I don't know, then maybe there's just like way too many tasks on our dwarves. Um, either that or we'll need to start assigning some more minor dwarves. Now, I thought that mining... <clears throat> yeah, the miner might be training. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I think we did do that. I, I did that accidentally. I'm pretty sure Irvad and Gizados was the like pretty much the main miner in here. And he was quite a good miner at that. So let's tell Irvad and Gizados, who happens to be the leader of the squad, to just leave the squad. Um, either that or we could just disband the squads that we created, which... I don't really want to do that. Can I just take... How do I take him out of the squad? Just one guy out of the squad. Um, I don't want to do... What is it? Not that. Um, go to nobles. Make uh, sure the gears are magma safe to Assign a different dwarf to... Ah, thank you very much. So we could just assign someone else to that slot. Okay, so that's great. Yeah, because there were some dwarves that I mistakenly assigned here. 
Okay, let's have all these musicians. Stop playing music. Fight. Oh, we could have humans. But this is Dwarf Fortress, not Human Fortress. That wouldn't have sold as well. It just doesn't sound as, I don't know, like exotic and interesting. <laughs> okay, so Irvad and Gizados, let's see where you're at. Come on, Irvad. That's a good man. Let's get down here. Let's get you mining. Um, okay, here we go. So now the Dralpha has passed. I suppose Irvad has taken care of most of his worldly needs. And now he's back down here and he's mining this out. And he'll probably get to that. Who was our other miner? Let's go ahead into that labors menu just for a second and see. Labors. So, okay, so you're an accomplished miner. So we might as well have you do it. You're dabbling miner, novice miner. Let's, yes, let's have more miners down here mining the mines. And I also said I would make it my goal to say, and they call it a mine as many times as possible during this video. So, and they call it a mine. A mine! To quote uh, Lord of the Rings. Why is that such a meme? Oh, please don't tell me that you don't know what that is. That would be me showing my age. Though I think everybody knows Lord of the Rings. Well, certainly everybody in this stream would probably know it. It's a mine. Oh, what's his name? Who was the um, Davies? Um, what is the actor's name? Who He really did such an amazing job. Who was in, um, whatchamacallit? Um, what is the name of the, the actor? The actor who played Gimli. John Reese davies Yes, thank you very much. John Reese davies is a legend. I was actually just going through those uh, production of Lord of the Rings videos. I was feeling kind of like down. Um, earlier this year. And I was just kind of like trying to get back in touch with a lot of things that I personally enjoyed a lot when I was a kid, which y you should really do a lot. You should cultivate that childlike wonder. But yeah, no, I was going back through those series and just they were so much fun to see how they produced those movies. They did such a good job documenting that stuff. Frog statues in the fortress. Well, I, uh, is the Pope Catholic? Obviously. Um, you know, I'm, I wonder if you can do that. Yes. John Reese davies was in Dwarf Fortress, playing the fortress as well, of course. So I don't really think that... We, now we know enough about how floodgates were. Um, of course, I'm being facetious about that. Um, but yeah, no, I just he is such an amazing person. Let's go ahead and have... Um, <laughs> let's just allow it to spill into the rest of the fort. I think I told you I was going to do this, so I'm doing it now. I'm going to destroy my fort. Uh, is there anything else nice I wanted to do? No, let's flood it with magma, and let's not even use floodgates. We're just going to do it, guys. I'm tired of using floodgates. I'm just going to have a good time. But I do want to make sure that it touches the other thing. Here we go. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. I wonder if the sediment will get caught in it. It's going to rush out fast. Oh my god, he was instantly immolated. He, it did catch up with him. Oh no, this is so horrible because they might not actually get to the water. The Drowthas are there, although the, I think that this will take some time, but... Oh uh, no, it is it's going way faster than I expected it to. And the Drowthas are still there. Well, I've still assigned the mining order. Let's see if we can get there in time. Good, we can get there in time for the water. No, please don't go that way. Oh my god, no, we should probably forbid these. No, it would be way better to just watch him go in. I wonder what he'll do. <laughs> Fath is just standing there. We should all be so lucky as to truly master a skill. Maybe he'll prevent the lava. Look, he could do like a you shall not pass. Oh, there's his my his copper pick. Wow, very exciting. Okay, someone has unleashed the water, and this is obviously going to go into the lower caverns. Let's find out what happens when they meet. They should cancel out each other, guys. That magma came spilling. Wait a second. What the hell? He just watched it as it burned him to death. Very crazy. Very crazy. Okay, now I'm excited for two things because the water is going to go down the stair. Okay, I should probably forbid these, but I'm curious again as to what you will do. All right, so the water is going down the stairs now, but we'll see what happens. There's... Obviously, he's misting at this Draltha. Oh my god, this Draltha somehow got caught up into the middle of it. That is so interesting. I wonder if it has enough common sense to see that for its life, it should go back there. Okay, now they're meeting. Oh. 
Minecraft happened, guys. Look, guys. Minecraft. Wow. I wonder if they'll still have time to mind this. Well, it, it won't make a difference. Now, what I should have done if I had been a smart boy would have been to, uh... Like, allow the obsidian to form here and then have that sort of create a natural floodgate. But I'm interested in just what will happen here if we just keep going at it. Because obviously I've done this in the most horrible way possible. Okay, it just pretty much keeps recreating an obsidian wall there because they keep meeting. Okay, and now we've intentionally flooded the staircase. And I'm pretty sure that this staircase went down farther before, but now we've flooded it. So now it's like the Titanic. Oh, it's been an honor playing with you gentlemen. Okay, now this should pretty much flood, but it should start to de-flood this cavern, and we could probably drain this into something else. Okay, now I want to do something uh, equally awful. Let's go over here. You're just having a good time over here. Let's go ahead and mine, and we'll call it a mine. A mine. We're going to mine this way. And then we're going to dig a stairway. Uh, maybe a few levels down. Go like uh, three levels down or something like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, and we'll see how, f how deep this goes. And then I want to have water come down from overhead because I want to see... That was like drastically an emergency, that dwarf throwing himself into the magma. The droughtless are just loving the water here. They've pretty much self-selected out of this population. Um, wow, we have gold here. Oh my gosh, native gold. Well, is native gold the same as regular gold? I'm sorry, I got so, so caught up in all the science going on. I was practically in Bill Nye's classroom right there. I just felt so enthused about that whole experiment. I did kind of lose track of chat there for a second, but yeah. Was there anything else we should do? Eventually flood up the stairway. Does water flood up stairways? Wait, we didn't have water flooding up stairways. Except was it on a higher level too? I don't see why it would. Oh, wait a minute. There is slightly higher levels of water. Oh, wait, no. Those are below levels because it goes through. Is it? Yeah, it won't go up. It, in theory, it shouldn't go up the Z levels, I'm pretty sure. Unless if we missed some horrible thing where there's more water pressure. Okay, but now I want to have water come in from above me because I think that would be exciting and dangerous. Let's go um, here and... I'm liking how you can just directly reference the above floor by keeping your mouse on the square. So let's go over, how about like a dangerous looking spot, like right there, right there. And I'm just going a few levels down. Oh, wait a minute, no, I, uh, no, I should be able to dig upward, yeah. So let's make sure that we do this right, if we're going to really do some damage here. I'm gonna go to this square. And then to dig the stairway up, we need to start with a stair because obviously stairs need stairs to occur. So let's just do this and I'm going to see how horribly I could flood. Was there something that I wanted to flood? Not really, I just wanted to cause a flood sort of. I wanna see if this takes the life of my minor dwarf if I'm digging up because generally speaking, it is a terrifying experience to mine upward. Not that I've ever done any mining, but as I imagine, that's what would happen. Horrible things are happening that we're ignoring completely. Good, we've got that pop That population is not coming down fast enough, though, I gotta say. Okay, so what happens here? So he's going up. Does he, does he know? Is he dead? We should have checked on who he was before we allowed that to happen. He could be in there still. Hello? Where is he? Where is he? Did he already run away or is he just underneath? I didn't see, yeah, I didn't see, uh, yeah, the population didn't go down. He could be in one of these squares. And it doesn't actually say that he's in one of them. Because we did have the moment where we it didn't say that he was there. Did he get sucked up into the floor above? It'll show up in the combat log. Oh, wait a minute. We've got the sparring. Hang on a second. We, we've got to go back upstairs for just a moment. Exciting stuff. 
Wait a second, no, that was, uh, that's not what I wanted to see. Let's keep going down. Oh, he's over here. How did you get over here? Wasn't this the guy? He felt satisfied at work. This was totally the guy who was just doing that, right? Well, how did he wind up over here? That had to be him. Had to be him. Anyway, okay, now I'm gonna do another water experiment because I wanted to see this. Okay, so this is very interesting. Does everyone see what science I just uncovered? Now, I wanted to know if this would just flood up to that level, but it does seem as though water accounts for all the other levels around it. So this does make natural sense. Except shouldn't the water also come up to this level too? Because it is, this is depth of water here. I would think that the water would come up to this level. Maybe it's taking time to level out, but you know what I mean? Like if we have six and seven up here, we should have six and seven coming up here too. Cause that vertical water pressure was extremely powerful. Yeah, kind of like a U-bend right here. That's essentially what we've created. <laughs> essentially, yes. <laughs> okay, one thing I will say from what I learned from people encouraging me to not dig into water earlier was use a corner flow, like mine into a corner because water flows like this, but supposedly like less fast than it would otherwise. But yeah, that seems to be a thing. An S trap. Gigenstein, thank you very much for the sub. Um, and Never Names, thank you very much for the bits. And Knife and Death, thank you very much for the sub. And Hackerman Fortnite God, thank you very much for the seven months. I like that name. <laughs> Hackerman Leet Fortnite God. Uh, I like that name. Uh, why did I name my channel Ambiguous Amphibian when I could have had Hacker Knight Fortnite God? That's amazing. Uh... That reminds me of my original Xbox Live gamer tag, which ever I remember with such fondness. I, I actually am not kidding. That is the best name. I like that. Okay, where are we here? So let's go ahead and just look out. So what other experiments we do? We now know what happens with water and magma. It's unfortunate that doesn't like... Well, it's not really unfortunate. I was just kind of expecting it to take a longer time rather than it just be an instant wall. But, you know... It is what it is, so we'll live with it. Smooth the wall, then carve fortifications to slow liquid flow. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, very good. Okay, so we've looked at what happened when we combined water and magma in a pool to see what happens. I did say I would flood some cavern. I'm going to try to see really quickly because it might not even be worth it to do this if we don't have a cavern here. But let's go ahead and dig down a second stairway beside the one that we just horrifically messed up. Let's go over this way. And then I think we'll dig a stairway downward, probably like right nearby that. And let's just go down to like as far as possible. Like, just in an ill-advised way. We'll make it a little bit wider just so that we can do that. And we'll just go down to the bottom of the earth to see what we can get that will probably uh, kill us all. Because I'm kind of curious, like, what's happening down there? Let's go check on our squads. Have they armed themselves? Nope, they still haven't figured out how to create swords. That's okay. All right, it's clearly it's just something horrible messed up in our work priorities. That, like I said, I'm not going to address right now. Um... <laughs> Go over here, it's fine. <laughs> we won't do what we did over there. <laughs> Just create the Titanic all over again. Cat food, thank you very much for the subs. Uh, or for the sub. Okay, so, um, flooding the caverns. We'll look into this. We're going to try to get, but what I'm trying to get right now is beneath this whole thing. I want to get beneath all of these giant things, and I'm hoping to create a magma sea or something like that. Or maybe, I don't know. We'll just see what happens. Flooding the uh, bottom cavern, flooding the entire fort for no reason, but just for fun. That was another item on my checklist. Eh. Well, the, I think that the most interesting thing perhaps here that we learned from the last time was this. There are limits to our machines. So our screw pump could pump water through at a fast rate. Well, we didn't have a very good flow here was another thing. What happens if we just do this? Now I'm going to do something very highly destructive now, so keep an eye out. 
And we're going to put a screw pump just right here because I said I was going to flood this plain. However, we didn't really have a very strong flow of water here. We had a, only a corner flow and that's only creating like one of water. I'm going to do some really bad damage to the fort right now or see if I am capable of doing that. How am I going to do this? How do I want to do this? I suppose we could cut the tree at a higher level to like leave a more of the stump there, right? Isn't that an option? So I should test out if I can do this. I haven't thought of this yet. Do they need some way of hoisting themselves up on this? Like chop the tree higher up? Could they do this? I suppose they might also need a stairway or a ramp to get up that high though too. Step ladder. How do we create a step ladder? I've been told a little bit of that. Um, here we go. Hang on a second. Let me just... Well, it is auto-saving. I'm fine. Um, hang on a second. I might be able to answer that myself. Step. Oh, it's totally right there. I can just create one because I have a brain. Amazing. Okay, we'll just make... That's just going to be a one-time order. I don't think we need too many of them. Um, they can carry it around and use it. Ah, oh, that's quite nice. Pathing like a ramp, they should be able to. Uh, let's see what happens with the step ladder. Does that work? This, supposedly, they're used for... They're gathering fruit. Hmm. I wonder if they could do it to cut the tree from a higher up point. Like, you know, get on a ladder and then... I mean, it seems highly dangerous, but also, like, it could possibly work. Um, anyway, I was thinking of creating, like, a platform so that they could do that. Anyway, it was interesting that all of this water was simply evaporating here. I'm wondering if we could power this thing from higher up. I might be able to do that, only because we've kind of finished off this experiment down here. You know, let's go ahead and disassemble this thing. We're going to remove this building. We don't need it anymore. We don't need these gears anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, delete these, because I would like to try a new experiment now. And we're going to go over here. And I'm trying to think, only because we made these windmills highly inefficient before by adding so many gears. Thought that was a car alarm in the game. I'm like, there are cars in Dwarf Fortress? I had a car alarm going out my window in real life. Very exciting to hear a car alarm. Perhaps like the high of my day. Um, let's go out into... Mm. Oh, don't you love this piano rendition of the Dwarf Fortress theme? We've probably made some horrible mistakes here, but yeah, we're going to live with that. They aren't still pumping out water, so now this is just a huge puddle, and this will eventually evaporate over time, so there won't be any more water here. It, it was interesting, though, to see that you could just create a huge puddle, and it doesn't necessarily cause, like, catastrophic damage. It's just a puddle. I thought we were going to destroy that entire plane, but I realized that, nope, water evaporates faster, which, I mean, this game feels natural. That is to say, oh, wait a second, we have discovered an expansive cavern? Yes. This was the goal of today. Didn't we discover this the last time and then maybe I just deleted my save? Ah, uh, no, I did that after I had finished the VOD recording. Okay, well, yes, we had discovered this cavern somewhere around there. We'll just let them keep digging into that because now there's going to be a massive hole in the bottom and horrible things will come up and fight us and cause chaos and that is... Good, look, we're already down to population 135. Good, we're losing dwarves by the minute. Okay, I did want to see, though, if I could get uh, a more flowy floodplain. Or even if we didn't do it like this. You know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Let's put those things back. Let's put those things back. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I w what I'm really testing out here is, if I have a complete flow of water, will I flood this entire plane with one of these things? Though that is now beginning to sound somewhat stupid. Should we just send the dwarves all to their deaths? Dump lava into the cavern? I wonder if we could bring lava up here. Lava up here? Yeah, they can get through 3-7 of water. That's true, that's true. Um, oh yes, we could get the lava into the cavern. You know, I'm going to leave that water experiment over there. It just seems like it would be too much work for not enough excitement. And I'm just like... You know, I... I know that I haven't really learned a lot of the game's systems, but I'm like, <laughs> this was the system that I most deeply wanted to learn. Oh, and we've got the singing going in. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. It's time to dump lava and lava. 
Uh, suddenly, I've become a New Zealander. Oh, we can even explain that. Oh, 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 yes, we can totally get to the lava. Oh my gosh, we've been wanting to get to the lava the entire time, and the music just kicks in at the right moment. We're getting over there now. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're going to put lava into the cavern, and this is the most thrilling conclusion to the Dwarf Fortress I'm an Idiot series. This has been my favorite YouTube series to do of all time, of course. Here we go. Um, let's make sure we get a good flow going. Ah, yes. Yes. I'm starting to learn the lyrics now. Gatal. I wonder what that means. Okay, time is continuing. Don't even continue the stairway. Don't even continue the stairway. We're putting the lava in. Can we see the ground? Oh, this is going to be very exciting. We could let the mon- No, we won't let the monsters come in. Just flood them with lava. Flood them with lava. There we go. Alright, let's see if we haven't killed all of our minor dwarves and if they'll still come down. Dude, we have time running. M. So we've got all those to priority one. Excuse me. It's like Fleetwood Mac, but they're all short people. <laughs> yes. It doesn't really last long enough, the song, but it's just such a nice... Uh, you know, they did a great job on the soundtrack. I keep saying that, but they really did. They did an amazing job. Like, we're running out of drinks, too. This would be very, very interesting if we ran out of drinks completely. Uh, we have sparring going on. Writing. We're going to ignore everything. We're being haunted by ghosts of all the people that have died. We're just going to leave them. I, I got to admit, though, like, I'm somewhat overwhelmed by the number of dwarves that have joined us at first. And I can't... But am I going... Do most Dwarf Fortress players pause that much in order to kind of... Although I've there have been many times I've wanted to pause here, admittedly. But I've just continued playing because I think it's more interesting for YouTube to keep the movement going. And albeit play badly... And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm just, I'm saying that right now. I, although if I were playing on my own, I would be pausing way more. Um, but yeah, I've, I, you know, I've done that to keep it interesting for you. Because it is interesting to watch. My task has been very cerebral for this entire time. I've been thinking about experiments. Oh, we got the water to the edge of the map. We never really gave this a good look. But I suppose that it does. Yeah, it's just flowing off the edge of the map. This was one of the experiments from the previous video where some thought this couldn't be done, but yeah, we make these into arrow fortifications and the water flows innocuously off the side of the map. Amazing. Settings to pause on my... Oh, we can do that. I don't want to do that. Pausing on certain waves, that would be good. Although, like I said, I would probably just unpause in poor decision-making. Um, I don't want to miss this lava. Let's just set a hotkey for this. We'll do that again. Okay, good. They are making their way over to the lava. <laughs> I love to say lava. Why is it that it's just so childish that there's lava in the game? Mm. Oh, did Blind do the pause thing? That's very nice. He's been putting up like very detailed tutorials, and I, I do appreciate that. They've been all over my recommended. Uh, set this entry, and I'm sure yours as well. Recenter on this location, so if we do... Okay, so this is the set, and this is the just go-to, because you don't have to use the hotkeys, because this game has UI, which is amazing. Um, let's go ahead and make this F6. So F6 is going to be our view of the lava. F5 is the bedrooms where we... Oh, what happened to that pond that we created? Oh, this was interesting. I forgot about... This is why I've done this for it, is there's just so many experiments I get to keep checking on. It's like, it's like growing a garden or something. Uh, now we have a pile of mud down here and some muddy floor fungus. So we were just pouring water down a hole nearby the graves. And it was fascinating. So we got like water growing in there, mud. But now it seems to have kind of taken over. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, nothing is in the right place in this fort. It's just r totally random stream of consciousness fort. Which is, is truly the best kind of fort. We just want to make sure that he doesn't get a corner flow here. 
Oh, and I'm realizing, you know, we really don't even need two because whatever dwarf does, this is just going to set himself on fire. Um, now, though, I would like to see if I can get a decent floodgate going, maybe. Or if we can't in time, then we'll just let him, you know, horribly burn. However, I'm struggling to think of a way that I could get a dwarf to mine into lava and not die. I suppose we would have to do it up and in. We would have to pump the lava in. There might not be a safe way to do this completely. There probably is. I'm just not thinking of it. Channel from the tile above. Oh! So wait a minute. What you're saying is that we could instead... I'm not going to do this because it would take a long time. Oh, well, maybe I will do it. Maybe I should do it. I'll give it a try. Yeah, I will give this a try. Only because this is going to be a safer way to do lava in the future, and I think I know what I'm doing here. So, whoops. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that just yet. Don't do Not yet. I mean, maybe do it, but wait a minute. This is the tile I want to do it from, but I want to be one level up, and we go this away. And then we go this way. And so what you're saying is channel from we channel from a tile up. Thank you again, Harkins, for that. So we would channel this tile, and then that would take out the tile beneath it. Ah, okay, this makes sense. If you make it more than one tile wide okay, that is interesting. Because of the way that the water pressure works. We might have to have more than one of them do it. How does one mine into lava without dying? Uh, oh, we might have to do two tiles. Well, let's just do a, a short experiment because I do want to see what this looks like. And they should be mining above it. Yeah, we'll give them a minute. Only because, look, I'm not, I, with every mistake I make, which I'm intentionally making many of them, of course I'm very smart and I would never make this many mistakes. Um, I, I'm just trying to learn and expose myself to as many new systems as I can. And I, I suggest that you learn this too, just make a fort, and that's just a throwaway fort, don't care what happens to it, and just have fun with it experimenting. Because I honestly think this has best, been the best way to learn this game, and I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Um, even if I were just like kind of on my own and not streaming it. Although I've had the luxury, of course, of having a, you know, 1500 people here to just answer all of my questions, which is like quite nice. <laughs> yeah, losing is fun. I've been told about this using magma to power forges. Like, I guess the, I suppose the rising heat. Does magma generate heat above it that causes wheels to rise? Or is that, or is it just for, does that exist? Now maybe I'm just making up random science because I, I wouldn't be surprised if it existed. Sadly, no, that's all right. But yeah, could be used to power forges, it's still quite cool. Though, I mean, that is to say, and the reason why I say that is because if you've watched the Wired interview with uh, Tarn about programming the game, just the kaleidoscoping number of things that he keeps putting into the game is incredible. And, like, he has a system for practically everything, it seems like. It's so interesting. That's a great video, by the way. Wired on YouTube. Um, and it was just them talking about the game. It was, uh, it was a very well-done interview. But, um... It's been a while since I watched it. Okay. So we have another experiment going. I guess the one thing that we could work on right here, we irresponsibly throwing my lives, the lives of my dwarves down into the depths of the earth. Um, well, we could throw them in there somehow. I'll probably send them all beneath the lava, the lava, ca the lava cavern. I wonder about having a magma waterfall. Could we have the equivalent of what we did with our tavern? Where was our tavern? Oh no, I lost the hotkey for my tavern. Where did I put it? F3, F7, F4, let's go here. It was a couple of floors down, not too, too far though. Okay, there is our new tavern. Yeah, we created a tavern just because we wanted to test out misting our dwarves. And that totally works. And we're getting a decent flow here as well. Are we getting... But it did carry over. It was quite nice. We were getting a very good flow and we have got fish coming through into the tavern, which is incredible. <laughs> Should get another uh, grate here so that they pass through. I think they just kind of innocuously bounce off. Let me just hotkey this area too, because I do believe I lost this one. Um, recenter on the current location. So this is F7. So we've got F5 bedrooms, F6 lava hole, F7 tavern. Good. So I would like to be at the lava area right now. Do the numbers in the uh, the numbers in the liquids mean depth? So it's 
zero index, so zero is nothing in it. We never see zero though. But then they go numbers one to seven, with seven being completely full and like up to the very top so that they could drown in it. But I believe up to level six, the dwarves will still struggle. What, there is something flying down in the cavern. Is that a bat? Let's just go ahead and check. It could be vermin. Yeah, what is that? What are you? Cave swallow, of course. How could I have forgotten? We're getting up to, we're getting to the lava water slide. I'm doing the lava water slide just slightly more responsibly. And I'm also learning too that this was a complete exercise in futility because I'm now just realizing that even from the level above, uh, yeah, he's totally gonna be adjacent to lava. Okay, I just have to get him killed. I don't know why I missed that a second ago. That was kind of stupid of me. But yeah, like we could have done it that way. But we're just, we're far too deep below the lava to turn back at this point. Here goes nothing. Um, nice knowing you. A second, how come we can't warm rough hewn obsidian wall? Did we have to undesignate that? There we go. Okay. <sighs> Good luck. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's bound to happen. Okay, just so we can kind of keep him in our memory. Tho oh no, Thob! I really didn't mean to do this, but it's too bad. He's frail. Goodbye, Thob. We hardly knew you. Right, so, heavy bleeding. All of that so-called knowledge doesn't mean a thing. Fair. Here we are with Thob in his last moments. Thob, do you have anything to say? Oh, he is trying to get out. Someone could have doused water on him at the last second. A shame, a shame. But you know what? We're doing it for science again. This is uh, incredible, incredible. It's interesting that his copper pickaxe is being thrown along here. Okay, yeah, of course, just go get that. What did you even just get? <laughs> Let me get that for you. <laughs> How did she survive the magma? We should take her back and study her. <laughs> I have so many questions. I personally like it that the lava gets more saturated and bright and glowy when we get to the seven tiles, and then it looks more dried out and low and sad when we get to just the level one. That's very nice. Um, but now the lava should flow through the cavern. And now we're getting to my big mistake. I really shouldn't have made this a two wide hallway because it looks like I just made the flow that much slower. And we, of course, like the most flowy of lava. It's hard to tell the viscosity of this lava. I was expecting it to flow. I mean, I've never encountered lava, but in the YouTube videos that I've watched of lava, it has been more like, what is the word for it? Viscous, viscous. It has had greater viscosity than the water. And it seems to me as though in Dwarf Fortress, is it flowing more slowly or does the water flow more, more quickly? What do we do with the lava now? There's not really anything I want. I mean, we could have done so many amazing things. I just kind of wanted to flood this cavern with lava though. I should channel out the tile from, um, well, we, the tile above, he would have also self-immolated. That was the mistake we made, but yes, I agree with you. Yeah, we should have channeled. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I also wanted to make sure that we had a large volume of lava above this, which we have many levels worth of lava. I keep scrolling up. See, we're at elevation negative three. Look, we're get we're losing the elevation only from the very top layer. See the la the lava moving around over here. This was the layer where we did that experiment. And then in theory, this layer should eventually be safe again. <laughs> Ooh, then we could pour the water from a top onto the lava, creating obsidian and then a pool with the bottom as obsidian. This is just so nice. Ah, oh, I like that. But look, the lava remains solid and mm, that's so good. But here, on this lower level, we have been moving the lava around. And now in theory, at least, it should be getting to the stairway. So what we should see here is good. So some of it is just going directly down the stairway and that's going right into the bottom. Well, it flows there, but then it flows out into this. And this is just open air right here. Very awesome. And then it looks like the lava is gathering at the bottom here. And um, well, that's creating obsidian and then that causes mist. Ooh, this is interesting. So we get to the top layer here. Guys, I feel like I'm playing Doodle God. You know that app game where you just 
like combine stuff. It's interesting to see whether the obsidian will... Well, I suppose it'll just form on this layer. What I think is going to happen... This is so cool. I really want to watch this in 3D. But hopefully you can kind of imagine what's going on, you know? Uh, there's something nice, though, about it. N not ha seeing it totally detailed. But yeah, open air, blue bean, it throwing me off. Yeah, I keep thinking that the... Yeah, a lot of people think that this is looks like water. So this isn't actually water. This is just open air. Though I do think that somebody made a mod to decrease the opacity of the Z-level open air, which I might end up using just because it makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, but yeah, only on this level is surface water. But then this is where we get depth water. So this is where the obsidian should be forming. See how there's obsidian, obsidian. And it looks like steam forms there too for a moment. In a solid tile. That's interesting. So we should be getting... Now it's taking longer for the flow of the two to come out. And then it spills out. And then it goes down because it is designed to go down first. But now I wonder what's going to happen when... What is this thing? This is a tower cap cap. So this is like a mushroom, I believe, right? I was thinking that this thing was going to go on fire. I'm wondering if we'll start to see fire at all because this is... What is a tower cap cap? Isn't that essentially a giant mushroom? Um, scroll through the... Um, yes, it's a giant mushroom. So wouldn't a giant mushroom be immolated by lava? Shouldn't it? You can use them for wood. Evidently, it's a fire... I mean, it, well, it could actually be a fireproof mushroom. I hadn't even thought of that. Nether caps are lava-proof? Jeez. That is so cool. Let's keep observing the effects. I'm just kind of curious because I wanted to totally destroy everything in this. I mean, the, the idea here was... And I'm sure we would miss other stuff. Okay, here we go. We've got fire now. We've got fire over the surface of the water, which is causing smoke. Wow. So this is getting into the water, but it, it was causing steam before because it was just water and magma. Oh, we're also kind of reacting with the water, which is lowering the water's level too. Oh, okay, so this is interesting. A lot of it, it kind of resolves itself. It's like the obsidian gets in the way, but what is this here? Okay, so I see. So this spore tree trunk... Whoops, what just happened there? We don't know. We're continuing to or ignore everything because we want to watch the elements. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I know. I'm just... That's my attitude for this. So it's getting into the water and then it burns part of the tree trunk when it gets over to it and makes contact. But then it turns it to obsidian beneath it. So we're creating what's essentially like a walkable bottom here. Except... On the other hand, too, you know, there's lava everywhere. But I suppose it would have been interesting to create a floodgate up top. And then, you know, where all the magma is spilling out from up here originally. Then we could have stopped that, had all of the lava cool, and then come down here to walk if we wanted to. If we wanted to explore over that water. Of course, there's other ways of doing it, but that's quite cool. Now there's just so much of it, and I'm kind of wondering whether the lava flow will happen. I mean, eventually this entire cavern should, in theory, just be filled up with magma, but not before we, you know, cause more destruction and chaos. Neat. Anyway, that was something that I wanted to do. I was thinking that I had exhausted all of the interesting things to do with the elements, and there's certainly more of them, but I don't know. It just fills me with possibilities, and I wanted to know what the limits of it were, and it seems as though it just becomes even more and more interesting to just release a whole system like this. This is by far the craziest, most chaotic one we've done so far. Um, but yeah, here it is. It's going to go into these inlets. Oh, wait, no, this is not where it's left. Never mind. Never mind. Obsidian casting factory is a fun project. I wonder if you could get like a... What, do you have like an infinite... Uh, what is it? Could you Minecraft it like Skyblock? Or you create an infinite cobblestone generator? That would be interesting. It's just such a cool game. Yeah, I had a, a brief vision of doing this. So we've got fire, ashes. And now it looks like some of this is spreading more easily. And that's destroying the bran fungal wood bran branches. But it didn't totally spread. And now we've got more of it. What is over here, too? Are these... I'm trying to see what's falling in. 
It's just so cool. It's like watching a an anthill or something again. Okay, so then these tower cap caps are indeed fireproof, it seems. Tower cap trunk, yeah. Ah. Isn't that satisfying? That's what I personally wanted. This is a good view of it. This is from the surface. And I guess this is open air out here. Wow, it looks like the fire has even spread to all the fungi on the other... What was the other shore before? How did it get over there? I suppose that it spread through the branches and this entire cavern is now just lit up with smoke and fire. This almost reminds me of seeing somebody getting invaded by... um. I think it was when we raided Blind the other day and he was doing the, uh, the dragon attack. Ah, oh, that was quite cool. Young Spore Tree. I wonder if these cause light. You know, I haven't noticed any light in Dwarf Fortress. That's a, something interesting about the subterranean aspect of RimWorld. Again, I'll go back here just for a moment. I don't see any light in the game, but it would be very interesting if that... Again, take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I don't know what I'm talking about. They're adding it? Really? Does that exist? Are you kidding me? Light exists, but it doesn't display. Ah, oh, that's so interesting. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe what it... Oh. Again, I'm just reading comments here, so, you know. Do your own research, but yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so amazing. It exists, but it doesn't display. Uh, so wouldn't this entire cavern be extremely dark? I wonder how they see anything. We got some sort of celebration. What is this? Uh, they've married. That sounded like a marriage. That was what I was expecting. You got married in the hospital. Great way to get ready for what's coming next. I don't know what I don't know what that comment leads you to. All right, they've still not done wooden swords, so our uh, work orders are horribly, horribly out of order. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do a couple more things. I've done all of the exciting experiments I wanted to. We've flooded the entire bottom cavern. This is extremely cool. We've even got smoke rising up. I wonder how high up it rises. Oh my gosh, wow. It's like rising up through the staircase and up into here. All of the stuff happening in this cavern. That's so neat. It does seem as though it's spreading upward. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't any fire on that level, right? Cool. Well, whatever is going on. Um, that was one other experiment I wanted to do. Let's just give that one last look, because it is quite memorizing. Uh, mesmerizing. Whoops. Um, but it is getting blocked in by the tower caps. Topaz cluster. There we are. And good, it's spreading out to the other shores. What is that over there? Who? What is that? Yeah, what is that? Cave spider silkweb and bat remains. Oh, I thought it was something moving down there. Never mind. All right, let's leave this cavern down here for a while. It's probably mostly going to be destroyed. We could watch it all get burned, and that would, I'm sure, be exciting. But you can kind of check out some of that. I do want to get on to maybe the last couple of boring things. Unfortunately, that was probably the last exciting thing for this, uh, for this kind of examination. Was that a spider? Oh, no. Quarry bushes. Never mind. Dissipate in the air. As long as it goes up a couple Z levels. Behaves like real smoke. That is quite cool. How much lava has gone down? Yeah, let's go... Well, check back on that for a moment. So this was the top layer of magma. We've pretty much not even gotten through the first layer of magma, it would appear. Or maybe... Yeah, this was the surface originally. And this was the next layer. So this next layer is still isn't even done going down. So we haven't even gotten through one layer of this. I channeled way too much magma, but very fun. Okay, I think that the very last thing that I wanted to do here, well, was to kill all of my dwarves. Because I was just wondering, is there anything astronomically dumb that we can do? Although I have kind of filled our entire path with, like, uh, lava. So I'm not sure it's going to be as easy for them to do that. Now, I could have them all become miners and then just dig into various sides of lava. And now that I say that, that sounds fun. But I don't really feel like I'd learn anything. So, I mean, what I was thinking of is we could just start a library or something like that. Um, yeah. Or we could dig down even deeper. Yeah, let's just have everyone mine. Okay, you know what? I'm going to save being a librarian for my own time now. I just want to do something horribly experimental where I do... Yeah, well, you'll see now. Okay, everyone, let's go into the labors menu because I just want, I just want to have fun now. Um, as that song goes, you know, girls just want to have fun and... Um, well, do we have any female dwarves? Do we have any female dwarves? We have, maybe we'll need to ask John Reese davies about that or something like that. Hang on a second. Everyone is a miner. You're all miners. 
I'm not sure if this is even going to work because they probably need a pick and we probably don't have this many. But, um, well, we'll make more. We'll make more. Everyone is a miner. I'm just, this is, you should always do this in your fort. This is a great idea. Okay, now we are going to the center of the earth. Um, yeah, we will definitely need more pickaxes. So let's go ahead and make those, but we'll just tell them to do it. And some of them will do it in their spare time because I want all of them doing this. And, um, you know, this isn't very smart, but I am a YouTuber and I like flashy endings. And I think that that's a very good way to end it. So let's go ahead into our labors menu really fast and just make picks. Okay, so pick, and we'll of course make these of stone because that should be allowed. No, fortunately that is not allowed. Uh, I don't really know what we have. So let's just make all of them. I was half expecting there to be wood and stone picks, you know, just for all of the other things. Uh, I guess we probably can't even make any of these because we don't even have any of the things. We, I'm pretty sure we don't have anything, right? Stocks? Yeah, fair. Pickaxes. Or is it under tools? What is it under? Where would we find the um, picks? It was in Minecraft. <laughs> Fact. Weapons. Oh yes, bars for available metals. Thank you, that's a good idea. Okay, so it is in there, so we do have, of course, three copper picks. Um, even if we can't get it all for that, that's fine. Bars, let's see what else we have. We do have a bunch of iron bars. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and make iron. Iron picks. Iron, that would be horrible to have to uh, pick. There we go, let's make like a million of these. Don't make that. Although at the rate that they haven't been making anything right now and just my work is horribly out of line, I'm not sure they'll do this ever. Uh, we're gonna make like a uh, hundred of those <laughs> because uh, if it ever happens, that would be amazing. Otherwise, we'll just issue the order and we'll do it with the copper picks. Uh, oh no, I just realized that all of the copper pickaxes got buried in lava. Oh, whatever it is. We're digging down to the center of the earth, no matter how many or how few dwarves we have available to do it. Let's just make sure that these caverns haven't been totally flooded. Okay, we'll go up a Z level, and then we're going to go mine out here. And we'll go this way. And there you are, totally safe. That won't be for long. And then we will do, let's just go, whoops, M and T. And we're going down. We're going down for real this time to the very center of the earth. Because what are we at? I think we've still got 90 levels beneath this, and someone told me that there's clowns, and a circus, and a balloon, so I, I really don't want to miss out on that. I think that would be fun. Rough hum I suppose that all of this means is that there is heat there. Good. Dwarves were meant to mine, after all. I suppose that this must mean lava adjacent, because I am getting this up Z levels. Oh, so then this tells me that there's lava below, too. That's useful. Lava adjacent, thank you. Yes, negative 128 is the circus. Wait a minute. Uh, hang on a second. Guys, this only goes up to, what is it, negative 95. There can't be a circus because... I'm ready to get alt f forward by chat. I mean, like, you know, we're practically at that point during the stream. Very fun. Got only two mining right here, but let's just go ahead and see our stocks. Let's go back up to the top. There are a lot of, of you, unfortunately, enjoying your lives in here. I'm just going to end that for a second. We're just going to get rid of this room. Nope, that's not a room anymore. We, In fact, we don't even have a fort anymore. All of you are just meant to mine. I don't care if you're unhappy. Just stop doing everything and just focus on mining to the center of the earth. And this is where I'm going to end this amazing fort. Because uh, stop fighting... Stop your hating and start celebrating. There we go, and get rid of that. And get rid of that. I think that's pretty much it. Yep, okay, good. So we're spending a little bit of time making some juice. Don't even make drinks anymore because just short term, just make picks. We're mining to the center of the earth and most of you, are, and most of you will stay there. Oh, oh, you forgot about the tavern, of course. Okay, the tavern is inconsequential at this point. Let's delete that. Yep, no tavern. No more mist. That's not a tavern. Get out of there. I guess they're just going to stay there for another minute. Okay, well, let's focus on digging. Uh, whoops, here we go. 
five, six. This is as close as I can get to the area. Okay, so digging, 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 digging. I guess we'll just wait and see what we find at the center of the earth, if it was worth it. We have made it to the center of the earth, almost, except that there seems to be magma pretty much everywhere past level negative 85. And this is cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start channeling then, I suppose. And Now, is this like strip mining? So we go in here and let's do every, I don't know, maybe five or so of these. We will just channel. Actually, in fact, cancel out these orders because I'm trying to get a sense of what is below us without... You know, ruining everyone's day. Okay, so on the level below, it does appear as if this is safe. So we can start channeling over here as well. And then we go to level below. And look, amazing. So maybe this is an even better way to mine down. Rather than mining just straight down, we could channel and make a stepped staircase. Ooh, that's as if you... That's how you would really mine as if this were... I, I keep comparing everything to Minecraft because... And I know that Minecraft is more inspired by Dwarf Fortress, but... Um, well, I mean, it's everybody's going to know the comparison, so I'm just going to keep doing it. But yeah, make fire exits. Why would I have to do that? There's just a circus down here, guys. Um, <laughs> discovered an unusual va volcanic wall studded with gems. Wait a minute, is this the gem? Where are the gems? Oh, no, this is a gem down here, right? Oh, it's beneath spinels. How do you pronounce this? Spinels? Red spinel cluster. Spinel. Spinel? Spinel? I don't know how to say that. I'm going to have to look on one of those word pronunciation videos where they always seem to get it wrong. It's like you look up a basic word like food, and they're like, food. And then you wonder why you came to the internet for answers in the first place. What was that thing that just blinked? There was totally just something that. Yeah, what is that? Hang on a second. What is that? Fire snake. Oh, very exciting. Okay, all this training and wrestling we've been doing is going to aid us in fighting the fire snake. So let's go ahead and see where it is again because it keeps just disappearing randomly. Okay, there it is. Okay, squad. Let's have the constructive arrow act. Let's give them an order. I am so... so where is it? I don't have a shirt. I am so ashamed. <laughs> As you ought to be. Sh you should be full of shame. What is that? Why is a man green? Hang on a second. Ghostly soap maker. He's still alive. I have more questions, but for the moment, let's go ahead and have the disdainful arrow act shoot the snake. And let's just go down 10 levels at a time because I'm... Why am I not allowed to go any further down? Oh, whoops. I was going up instead of down. I apologize for that. I have my things inverted. Okay, let's go ahead and tell them to kill that snake. Why can't I do that? Is it technically considered vermin? Can I tell everyone to? No. No, it's kind of funny. I don't know why I'm not allowed to do this. Let's have just them. Yeah, um, hang on a second. Kill, yeah, kill the snake. I don't know why I can't designate. He's a ghost. To, he's a ghost. Oh, because it's vermin. Okay, so this thing isn't quite as scary as I thought it was then. Never mind. I thought fire snake, big deal. Apparently, run of the mill. It does keep disappearing and reappearing out of existence, though. Either that or just disappearing behind a rock. But we don't really get a blink. Ah... Uh. Well, this is a satisfying way to dig. I mean, we've been digging up and down stairs for this entire time. And now it's a little bit interesting just since we can't get through the magma on the layers below. I figure, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's channel out the bottom so we'll mine. Oh, there is magma all or almost entirely all around us. <laughs> okay, then that's fine. We'll just do it that way. So pretty much they're going to w walk into this hollow over here and then start digging out the wall. And then I imagine we could continue channeling out beneath just so that we kind of get... Yeah, now they're going underground because we haven't even cleared out this floor here. Ah, uh, it's dwarf-like. Oh my gosh, I just remember that we're playing Dwarf Fortress and that's the name of the game. Wow, what a funny coincidence. Let's go down even deeper into the... And they call it a mine... 
Whoa, whoa, what was that? I didn't read that entire message. What was that? Oh. Discovered an unusual... Oh, this is nice. We're raw adamantine. Oh my gosh. This is horrible. Wait, if we... Wow. This is magical. Candy! Look, there's candy underneath. <laughs> yes, candy. And here, we do have fire snakes over that. Because, of course, a snake could survive because we have made it down to literal Florida. I think I've been told that you should put grates here because these dwarves are kind of <laughs> freewheeling it by just walking over that. Um... Should we mine the... I mean, you could just trick me into doing something horrible here. Wait, we have water? Maybe that was why we had the thing from before. Let's go ahead and mine this. I'm just going to make a massive mistake because I did, after all, say I was going to try to take... Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Why did I do that? That was a bad idea. But also very fun. Wow, obsidian just filled that up very fast. It's interesting. So we found like a, a little area of water beneath here, a, a pocket of it. We did get the adamant or emeralds. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna find the diamonds. You guys, I think there's some diamonds down here. And now we just filled this with a giant puddle of water. All well, is now it's gonna be a hollow. I guess we could release it into the magma sea. The diamonds totally dig into the adamantine, dig down, dig deep into the <laughs> Yeah. It does appear, though, that there is a big pocket of water here. I don't know. I mean, I felt... I, I thought this was a magical series. For me, I'm just, like, I think we're going to put a bookmark it in there. Because, um... Oh, and it turns out we see the entire magma sea of, from layers up, too. That's kind of cool. I, I think I'm going to stop it there. I'm sure that there's more amazing things we could go down to. What I'm told is the nether. No, I don't... I have no idea what is in it. But, yeah, I have been told that there's a circus down here. Um, there's like five levels beneath us, but I, I guess that's about what we're going to find down here. Magma sea. I was told to look for the magma sea. That's quite amazing. Uh, is there more? Is there more? There's candy. Wait, are we... Is there... Is there candy? <laughs> now I legitimately don't even know who to believe, but I do see that there's more rock here. I'm going to dig for the candy now. Okay, fine. I'll do it. If there's no candy, I'm going to be very disappointed in you, though. Let's just dig straight down right here. Um, M, and we're going to dig directly down. Whoops, T. Uh, M, T. But yeah, as I'm saying, while I'm digging down for the candy... You guys are very scary right now. Everyone in chat is like Pennywise the Clown. Do it, Georgie. There's clowns and balloons. As many balloons as you, or what is it? Mine the delicious candy. There's no candy. There is diamond here, though. Wow, yellow diamond. This is kind of reminding me of all those stones. You remember in Knights of the Old Republic when you have to go forge your own life lightsaber? And you make it out of, uh, well, whatever it is. I can't, I can't remember. You remember when you have to do that? That's such a cool thing. Once you get deep enough into the adamantine, then they'll send in the clowns. Guys, I think we found all of the adamantine. Isn't adamantine... Where is it, anyway? Green diamond. I, all I see are green diamonds. Obsidian, that's from the lava. Yeah, I don't see any more of this adamantine. Speaking of which, though, is there a way to go find a particular stone? Like, control F, search it. Never lead you astray. Well, where is the adamantine? Usually occurs in spires, not deep, but there's a whole circuit. Yeah, there is something horrible down there. Um, oh, it's in the walls of the magma sea. Yeah, there is that. Wait a minute. Is there adamantine there? Adamantine. Granite, granite. I'm just trying to figure I can't even find the adamantine. Everyone's, like, trying to play a trick on me, but I don't even know how to activate the thing that's basically going to kill me. I'm willing to be uh, hoodwinked into my own death right here. I think that would be a good time to end it. Hmm. It looks like they got more mining to do down here. Oh, why have you stopped digging? Keep going, keep going. Or maybe there was there more magma down there. Yeah, for some reason they just don't go down. Oh, 
Okay, so they're in the walls of the magma sea. Well, how the hell am I going to get over there? Semi-molten rock. I'm sure that sounds like a... Yeah, I mean, well, we've already seen what happens when a dwarf is just immolated horribly, so... Uh, no skin off my nose. Well, let's just keep mine over here and then we'll channel. Anyway, I don't know. I mean, what I wanted to say is I think that Dwarf Fortress has kind of cultivated in me, again, like the wonder and the love of simulation games. And I haven't seen anything quite this ambitious in a long time. And, you know, I truly do hope that we get to do it on the main channel at some point. I really don't feel like I'm good enough to do anything on it. And I've done CDDA in the past, and I just horribly didn't know how to kind of present it. So it didn't really go well. So I, I am, like, very full of trepidation on how I really want to do it. And I don't, I simply just don't have any good ideas yet. And I think that, um, well, Krug Smash is just such an amazing YouTuber and you guys should definitely go watch him. And I just hope that, um, I don't know, I hope that this has been an opportunity to spotlight some other amazing people who do some really cool games. And I, I do hope you guys check out their channels. How can I get them to dig into this lava though? Like, that's fine, just dig it. Can you dig it? Come on, guys. Oh, my God. This is horrible. Oh, no. I now understand why. It what is that? A leech demon. Oh, hang on a second. This is not authorized. Oh, is that it? Okay. Well, it's just a leech demon. It's fine. Oh, is that it? Okay, great. Okay, amazing. Okay, good. I've been smackledorfed. Okay, we've uh, we've discovered the most horrible thing in the game, apparently, because I... 208-year-old uh, leech demon. So this should hopefully kill all of my dwarves, I, I am told. We... Oh, my God. It's... She didn't feel anything while in complex. Oh, it's a she. It's a lady. Um, it's killing all my dwarves. This is good. This is pretty much what I wanted. But I was expecting the leech demon to come out later. I was told that this was a circus, so... I don't know. You guys are you guys are pretty, pretty edgy, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and see if the leech demon. Yes, good. It's going up the stairs. Good. Go right for the fort. No, it's just chilling there. Never mind. That's kind of a, a bummer, really. Now we did find raw adamantine. We, if we breach the netherworld, we should be able to see hell. Is there hell down here? There's a leech demon. Okay, you're just having a good time doing leech demon things, but if we got in, we should be able to see... Oh, wow. Well, this was the final level that we could get to, though we were told that there was adamantine. I believe it was right here, so if we could dig beneath the lava, we have to get underneath it. Wait, so we still have, didn't even find the main vein down. Yeah, I thought that was just something that we found in the wall. The game was trying to tell me not to do that, but then I, I did it. Anyway, and I, I really don't have any regrets. I'm, I'm glad I did it. I, I try not to live with any regrets, but... Let's just keep channeling downward because, well, obviously we want to cause all of this stuff to just come together. I mean, the main idea here was this. I wanted to cause, um... I wanted to create a bridge over the lava this way so that they could then mine through this wall and then get to the adamantine and then pierce through to the next layer. And then we would get to see what's on elevations negative 86 through negative 89. But what I'm starting to see is that this is basically Terraria at the bottom. But I'm also not very optimistic about any of the other dwarves being able to get underneath this because this leech demon has so far killed everyone that's tried to get down. So, um, wait a second. We could follow you. Now there is <laughs> this 28-year-old poet. It's just, are you going, yeah, you're going up levels. <laughs> You're not, you're not going any, co come on, man. It's just, a, it's a cookie down there. I don't know why, but no one wants to get near the leech demon, even though that it's already killed about five people down there. I suppose that they do have some degree of common sense, though. Where is, let's go find that nice leech demon. That thing was powerful. Very powerful. Probably could have flooded this thing with magma. How does it live down there? What does it subsist on? Like nuts and berries? Other things that you could find? <laughs> what was that? Yeah, there it is. It's just guarding the stairway. Menacingly. <laughs> All right, just tell me what's it. I'll, I'll look it up at the end because I can't, I can't get past it and I feel inadequate. <laughs> They're run, running up the top floor to drink. It's such a poorly managed floor. But yeah, there is 
so what is there there's like a, a whole world of demons beneath it i mean what is this everyone's brain oh my god it took off someone's hand this thing is truly terrifying look at his visual description i think that would be a good way to end visual description what is it thoughts what are its thoughts doesn't feel anything while in well of course it doesn't because it's a demon it's coded in our blood history description very large hairy leech it has a round shell and it belches and croaks its slate gray hair is long and shaggy boo where it's poisonous gas very quick to tire to me it just looks like a tire on the side of the road that somebody left there after they had to replace their tire but I mean, kind of amazing to see that this stuff exists. I feel like that I'm only just discovering the beginning of a brand new world. And I i don't know. I feel like that that's a good place to leave it. There's there's more. But I also, I don't want to spoil it for people who want to, you know, you should you know, try out the game for yourself. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, anger it with them. Oh, actually, that would be a good idea. I didn't even thought of that. Hang on a second. Yeah, let's use the military. Although the military didn't seem so willing to do all of the things I wanted them to do before. Okay, good. We've sent the military. Let's send the entire military, especially that guy just randomly with a bow. Um, and then let's go follow one of them just to see what happens with this thing. Okay, we will follow the leech demon just for when our military comes after it. I hadn't even thought of that. Okay, good. Everyone's coming after this thing. And have they slain it? Oh, they slayed it so fast. I thought that it was otherworldly and it would just kill us all okay now we're going down now we're merrily mining away la 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 everything's fine ignore this uh is that a person nope it's not a person okay that's fine um hmm we're we going to need to keep oh no we've just gotten the magma uh, i feel disappointing i can't like think of a way to build a bridge across here. If I did, I would, although I feel like I'm just kind of going to get it wrapped up in another conflict. I feel like slightly boring, but this is the most exciting thing, and I never thought that we would get this far down into the earth. But I did get um, almost 20 of my dwarves killed, so that is quite good. This is not how this interaction usually plays out. Is it usually harder to kill it? But yeah, no, I mean, that was fine. Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel as though there were a lot of places I would have just stopped if I were a single player. So, I mean, this entire series was kind of intended to just give you a look at it with chat over your shoulder, <laughs> like teaching you the game. So I hope that you at least got that experience. But yeah, no, I mean, thanks to you, especially Harkins, especially from today, uh, for helping me get through a lot of the new stuff in the game.